As a cyclist, when you get to the age of 35, a whole new world opens up. Masters racing. Great way of getting into sport. There's loads of events at grassroots level, but it can also get very serious. So how hard is it? I've come to the World Masters Cyclocross Championships to find out. But I'm also racing as well. So wish me luck. It's been 18 years since I did a cyclocross world championships and having been retired from pro racing for a decade now, I felt like it was time to pin a number on again. No matter what age you're racing at, it's good to have a little bit of support, a bit of backup. So as you can imagine, there were a lot of willing volunteers at GCM Megabase to come and help. Hey, so who wants to come to the World Masters Cyclocross Champs this weekend and be part of my pit crew? <clears throat> Any, anyone? <clears throat> anyway, fortunately, there was one person I could rely on, the world's biggest cyclocross fan and GCN Enigma, Tom Lars. Thanks for coming, mate. Unlike World Championships for juniors and elites, the selection criteria for Masters World Championships are very different. Sometimes it's still really selective, like for Ironman, for example, but here it's much more relaxed. I've just sent an entry form in and, well. So here I am with a number just a few hours before the start. I've got to say, I feel properly nervous actually. All those old emotions from when I was racing for a living have come straight back to the fore. And also this event, like it feels big. There's a lot going on here. Now, by a nice little twist, although I'm still only 39, my category is the 40 to 44s. So uh, fairly, uh, fairly major moment in my life, suddenly becoming a veteran, but there we go. Um, so yeah, there's a world championships at stake. Oh my God, I've got no expectations for a result, really, but there's a lot to get excited about. Anyway, I better go get myself sorted. Is that Tom queuing for Chip? So while Sai's pre-riding the course, I wanted to find out just how seriously Masters riders take the sport. So we went around asked a few riders a few questions. So how many hours do you train a week? Uh, well, currently I train about eight, between eight and 10 hours. I've got some young kids at the moment. So I used to train about 12, 14 hours, but I'm down to about eight or 10 hours a week at the moment. Five or six. Oh, Coy, you're catching me up with that. Um, I'm using Trainer Road, so I'll probably do 10, 10 hours a week. Four hours off-road every week. Uh, and I'll train more technical and effort-based, yeah. Usually six days a week. How many hours? Not that much, usually an hour. Yeah, usually it's an hour per day. I try to wa wake up every single day, five o'clock in the morning, and do one hour of turbo, and then go to work. It's dropped a little bit now, but probably between 10 and 12 hours a week at the minute. About 12 hours a week, probably something like that. Um, I'd say between eight and nine, maybe, something like that, yeah. So what have I been doing? Well, an average of about five hours a week, I reckon, which is all I can fit in. I would like to do more, but something would fall over if I did. Most Masters races will be similar. I guess having a life outside of cycling, jobs and families mean that training gets squeezed in at odd times and in strange places. I entered Masters Worlds about nine weeks ago, so it didn't leave me long to prepare for it, but I wasn't starting from zero either. Fortunately, I've got an okay level of base fitness year round that kind of gets me by. So really it was a case of what could I do differently to get fitter without having any more time to train. I started by reducing intensity, so doing more zone two riding, 
but I realized that four hours a week of zone two is not enough to get me any fitter. And about five weeks ago, about halfway up out to Zwift, I came to the realization that I need to do a lot more high intensity work. However, there is only so much high intensity work you can do before you overcook it. So I settled on two really hard sessions per week and I did also get a race in last weekend, which was much needed. Now, those really hard sessions, I worked on my anaerobic capacity. So I was doing way over threshold work, over unders, up out the Zwift, VO2 max intervals, pyramid sessions and the like, and also some dirty 30 second sprints on the way home from work, which are horrible, but effective. Now, I reckon I might be a couple of percent fitter maybe, having been really focusing on it, but really, I've got to say, I've just enjoyed having a target and actually the preparation and thought that's gone into it has made my riding even more enjoyable. So I think most people are saying they do around six to eight hours a week. Maximum is 12. I'm not sure Sai's si telling the truth about five to six hours. We'll find out when he races, I guess. Tom and I are just messing around with tire pressures and Tom's very kindly picked out a load of grass that was still in my rear derailleur from last weekend. I probably saved him about half a watt here. I don't know what you're laughing about. I am excited actually. I'm trying not to, I got a text message the other day from a, from a good mate who's like, don't focus on the result, focus on the process. So I'm focusing on the process. And I'm looking forward to riding around that course because it looks mint and it's dry. That's what I'm telling myself. I'm just messing around with a saddle setback, which is stupid really, but uh, last week, uh, when I was racing and I wasn't quite sure I got it right and I didn't do anything to it this week and then I was like oh hang on a minute I need to move my saddle forward so there we go five mil right I've got 50 minutes to go now so I need to get out of this car which is very nice and warm and get on my bike and do some warming up and I kind of don't really want to Partly because I don't want to get cold, but also because I do feel pretty nervous, actually. Like, I'm not thinking about the results, I'm thinking about the process. Craigie, Nick Craig gave me some tips about starting. I'm going to hug the right-hand side of the start straight and then try and go around everyone on the first corner and then dive bomb everyone on the second corner. So if I cause a massive crash, it's Nick's fault. Um, so I'm focusing on that, but really I just need to crack on and do it. Have you ever done pit crew before? What? you ever done pit crew before? No, I've only ever done it once and it was for you at that time. So. It's so easy to get psyched out at the start of races. I can see why cycling is intimidating. So I've been doing it a while now. I just keep looking around going like, they look like they know what they're doing. Those are nice ankles. I reckon they're going to be good. So it goes on. It's only the start line when you kind of like hope that you go past the people with the nice ankles. But anyway, let's see. I'm just going to hide behind my oversized sunglasses. <laughs> Hopefully intimidate some people myself. <laughs> the grid is not working out very well for the side. Ryan Mackin. Okay, it's it. Cheers. <laughs> Too much like a triathlon for my taste. Get, no, I'm just getting good. undressed. It's very cold. Oh no, Sai's way up at the front. Come on, Gary, mate. Go on, Sai, 14. What did expect that? Yeah. This is the bike that Sai is going to be riding at the World Masters Cyclocross Championships, and he couldn't really be doing much better. It's the same frame and forks that Mathieu Vanderpool rides. 
This bike probably isn't going to be going as fast as Vanderpool, but that's not the bike's fault, that's size fault. Um, it's a Canyon Inflight CF SLX. He's riding SRAM, he's got one by, and he's got a power meter, so we can look forward to seeing the numbers and just seeing how much he actually was suffering during the race afterwards. Like many cyclocross riders, Sai has a spare bike. However, his spare bike is quite different. He is on a Canyon Grizzle. It has Shimano instead of SRAM, so if he does change bikes, he's gonna have to get used to a different way of changing gears. This bike is one by, his spare bike is two by, a few differences. It shouldn't be too much of a disadvantage though, because it's still a great bike and it's dry, so he probably won't be changing bikes. His main disadvantage is that I'm in the pits. Go on, Cy. 10th, about 30 seconds off the lead. I think I got both those about right. Could be wrong. Go on, Cy. Ninth now. Ninth, keep going. Go on, Cy! Go on, Seven! Go on, keep it going, keep it going! So he started 41st out of 45, I think. So not a brilliant start position. All the start grids were drawn at random. So basically you enter and regardless of kind of how good you are or whatever ranking points you have, you get randomly gridded. He didn't win that random lottery at all. Almost lost it. And now two laps in, he is about 20 seconds off the lead last time I saw him. So could be a bit off on that, but he's well into the top 10, which is a huge effort coming from that far back. Now, at this stage of the race, Sai is doing surprisingly well, but I think my words of encouragement in telling him he was doing a really good job may have been a little premature. Oof. And that even made it onto Twitter. Unlucky side. Master's racing hard. Maybe it's because I'm getting old. Oh. Wow. In terms of post race debris, I, uh, I couldn't do a Matthew Vanderport or a Tom Pidcock. So it took me a while to cut through from my gridding. And just as I was closing in on fifth, which seemed pretty good, I had a really embarrassing, really embarrassing crash on the barriers where I went in too fast. I was like, I'm not going to be able to go over the second one. So I decided to let go of the bike. There was this sickening crack as it hit the barriers, and I just kind of jogged over the top of it. Anyway, that sent me back a bit, but it's been riding on my limits since then. I'm literally seeing stars. I think that's a good sign. Look at this guy, awesome, well, what a ride! Well, oh, fantastic! We've got to say huge thanks to Steve for, for organising it. What, what an amazing ride. event, Steve. It's superb! Ah, oh, there was full gas, eh? No that rest. Full gas. That was full gas. It's a really good circuit. Like, really good. Proper racing. It's proper racing. Real racing. Absolutely. Yeah. Full on. Nowhere to rest. No. Nah. Technical. Just, but what a ride. Good yeah, stuff. Thank you. Cheers. You're welcome. 
How hard is Masters racing? I'd have to say, Tom, at the sharp end, it seemed pretty blooming hard. The guy that won was going quite quick, right? Yeah, well, you didn't see much of him. He was going, he was going pretty fast. It looked pretty quick in your group as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I um, was quite quick. The speed with which I fell over at the barriers was, uh, was definitely pretty high. Um, but you know what, right? Aside from the fact that it being super fast at the top end, the one thing, I wasn't sure what to expect from today, but the one thing I've taken above all else is just how much people love racing bikes that are here. Everyone's here for the, the championship experience, just to get a bit of a taste of riding on a course like this. And ah, oh, just, it's such, been such a great experience. Genuinely, absolutely loved it. So thank you very much, uh, Steve Grimwood, for putting it on and uh, for letting us race, basically. What was it like for you, Tom? Yeah, I'd agree. It's the same. You can see there's like there's families, there's groups here, and everyone just loves riding their bikes. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. Did it um, hurt as much as you remember? Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah. Oh, it was great. It was one of those ones where, you know, like, you're sort of trying to balance going as fast as you can with concentrating on where you're going. And every now and then I was thinking, like, you know, I was, my mind was drifting. I was thinking about chips and mayo, and then suddenly you're like, oh, God, right, you've got to snap back into it and stuff. It was properly one of those. But... Um, was it was it good to be back at a bicycle race? It was good to be back at a bicycle race. It was good to be back at like if it had been my first experience in the pits and I'd actually been required, that would have been a bit difficult. So it was good to be back in the pits and you know just just there as a safety net. I like your I like the tactics that you were sharing. You didn't listen. That. No, but I was like it was nice that you. Were <laughs> I'm not very good at sitting in on cross races. No. I get a bit worried going around corners. Yeah. But anyway, there we go. Um, Tom, mate, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for, for having me. It's, it's, been been good. it's been absolutely brilliant. Thank you uh, for watching. Give it a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And what are you waiting for? If you're old enough, come and have a go at Masters Racing. It's absolutely mint.